The interview I'm about to show you is an absolute shocker. It exposes how the Israeli state is twisting reality, gaslighting us, and justifying the mass slaughter of innocent people. It's very important that this propaganda is dissected and exposed for exactly what it is. Now, a bit of context. The interview is with Zippy Hotavelli. She's Israel's ambassador to the UK. Who is she first? Now, she opposes any independent Palestinian state. She supports a greater Israel based on the permanent annexation of all the occupied territories, which she calls Judea and Samaria. Her view is that means not just annexing the West Bank and East Jerusalem, but Gaza as well. She once declared the land is ours. All of it is ours. We did not come here to apologise for that. She's even condemned the Board of Deputies of British Jews for backing a two-state solution, claiming an organisation that supports the establishment of a Palestinian state is working against Israeli interests. She claims the Nakba, that's when 700,000 Palestinians were expelled in 1948 during the foundation of Israel, is a very popular Arab lie. She opposes marriages, by the way, between Jews and non-Jews. That would mean she's opposed to Keir Starmer's marriage, for example. Even Melanie Phillips, not exactly a pinko lefty, has condemned her for being too extreme in her rhetoric. She should be regarded as an extremist because that's exactly what she is. Now, this interview she did on Sky News is disturbing. So let's just listen to what she said. What's the view on the humanitarian crisis in Gaza this morning? Uh, there is no humanitarian crisis because... There isn't? It, there is no. Uh, Israel is in charge of the safety of the Israelis. Hamas is in charge of the safety of the Palestinians. Hamas abused every single support of the international community and instead of taking care of his people. There is no humanitarian crisis in Gaza. An absolute grotesque lie and a disgusting lie and also a dangerous lie because if that is in any way believed, that will undermine efforts to prevent that humanitarian crisis from growing and causing even more mass death. Now, as it is, before the current horror show, Israel subjected Gaza to a 16-year-long blockade from land, air and sea controlling the supply also of water, food, energy and fuel, which is why the United Nations declares Gaza to be under, legally speaking, occupation, despite the withdrawal of Israeli troops. That has left 80% of its population dependent on international humanitarian assistance. 70% of its households before this were classified as food insecure, unable to afford uh, the, the means to, to feed themselves adequately. Two thirds of refugees, now, bear in mind, half the population are children, hungry, desperate kids. Since the war began, the Israeli defence minister declared a total siege with no electricity, no food, no fuel allowed in. On the grounds we are fighting human animals, genocidal rhetoric there, adding Israel intends to, in his words, eliminate everything, as well as other statements from Israeli officials saying that Gaza will be reduced to a city of tents. That is collective punishment. It is illegal under international law. Now, UN agencies report that clean water has run out and Gazans are reportedly drinking from the sea. It may well be that thirst ends up being the biggest killer. We don't know. Food is running out. Hospitals have been bombed and electricity to power them and keep people alive is running out. Even a Conservative minister, Andrew Mitchell, has declared a humanitarian crisis is looming, though obviously it is already here. It's a lie to suggest otherwise and a disgusting lie when so many people are suffering. Let's here again. It created this underneath tunnel of terror, a manufacturing of rockets that their own main target is to hurt innocent Jews in their homes. And this is the time that Hamas need to pay the price for its abuse, killing innocent Israelis, and now preventing from his own people to evacuate and to be safe. Israelis worked with the international organizations to make sure all Palestinian civilians will be safe and we are giving them the opportunity to go south to a sheltered places, places that they will be safe. Unfortunately, the children of Kfar Aza, the people of Sderot, were not given this opportunity to be safe. They weren't alarmed. They didn't get alert. They were slaughtered in their beds. So Israel, Israel is just targeting military targets. Where do you even begin here? Where do you even begin? Now, firstly, about Hamas preventing people evacuating and the so-called, what she describes as the opportunity, the opportunity to go south. What she's talking about here is ethnic cleansing, the forced removal of the Palestinian civilian population. That has been described correctly by the Norwegian Refugee Council as the war crime of forcible transfer. It has been condemned by the United Nations in these terms. Forcible population transfers constitute a crime against humanity and collective punishment is prohibited under international humanitarian law. She calls this an opportunity. 
an opportunity. I mean, it's just so grotesque. It's just so grotesque. Now, it's not true that those fleeing the South are being somehow kept safe by Israel. Let's just listen to the BBC Gaza City correspondent. Last night, there was uh, three airstrikes that killed over 100 people, according to health ministry here. They said all of them are civilians. Those are people who evacuated from their homes in Gaza City and in the north, and they flee to the area that Israel asked people to come in. People thought that this area is safe. There you have it. Israeli strikes killing over 100 people who obeyed the order and moved to the south. It's also clear that Israel wants a new Nakba, a new mass expulsion of the Palestinian people so that they can take Gaza for Israel. This is not a conspiracy theory. It is not a baseless smear. Not only has the UN Special Rapporteur declared a second Nakba may be underway, this very ambassador, Zippy Hotovelli, as I've said, regards Gaza as Israeli territory to be annexed. They're not pretending. They are, spe they are speaking plainly about this. This is all, they're not, they're not hiding it. It's all in plain sight. Now, she says, what well, all Palestinians will be safe. What is she talking about here? Over 3,000 Palestinian civilians are already dead, including around or over 1,000 children. A woefully conservative estimate because so many are um, dead and buried under rubble. And in a war it zone, is logistically hard to retrieve them, so classified as missing. Just targeting military accounts just offensive gaslighting. Even the official Twitter accounts of the Israeli state are gleefully posting images of destroyed civilian buildings. Entire neighborhoods are being razed to the ground. That has been confirmed by journalists, that has been confirmed by aid workers on the ground, and it's been confirmed by the images that we can see with our own eyes. All the living generations of 45 families were wiped out. That is the consequence of the mass bombardment of civilian targets. Let's hear some more. And we want the international community to make sure Hamas will bring back home all those kidnapped people, including British citizens, by the way. Yesterday, I got a phone call from uh, Israeli citizens that said the mother was shot and the two teenager girls, 13 and 16, are kept hosted in Gaza, British citizens. We've Let's be clear, the taking of civilian hostages by Hamas is absolutely unacceptable. And of course, they must be released. I mean, that's what Hamas obviously should do. Nobody serious supports taking civilian hostages. Does anybody in their right mind think the way these hostages are going to be rescued and come home alive is through this onslaught? Does anyone really believe that? I don't think anyone actually believes that seriously, do they? This was a hostage rescue mission. This would not be happening. If they're going to justify this absolute carnage, be honest about it. Don't pretend it's a hostage retrieval operation because it isn't. And it almost certainly involves the mass sacrifice of these hostages, which the Israeli state is softening up public opinion for. It should also be said that Israel holds over 1,200 Palestinians without charge. In 2016, they revised a previous law that stated children under 14 couldn't be held criminally responsible. It's estimated that the Israeli military detains and prosecutes between 500 and 700 Palestinian children each year in military courts, lacking basic safeguards for a fair trial. Save the Children allege that children in Israeli custody suffer immense emotional and physical abuse, including violence of a sexual nature, often beaten, handcuffed, blindfolded in small cages in detention centres. Are these not hostages too? And do they not deserve to be released? Let's continue. I've been showing pictures this morning that would illustrate that there is a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Are you a mother? Yes. What would you think if your children would have been executed in front of your eyes. Would you expect your government to think about those Nazis committing those crimes and to say, wait a second, first of all, we need to protect the enemy and then to protect my children. Your children come as priority to your prime minister. So we Do you know that? This bit does make me sick to my stomach. The murder of children, the murder of children by Hamas is absolutely unacceptable and vile and needs to be called out as such. It is a war crime. Never downplay that. Never downplay that. Of course, we should be outraged. What Zippy is doing there is using that horror to justify the murder of far, far more Palestinian children. Before this latest nightmare in the last 15 years, 96% of fatalities were Palestinian, according to the United Nations, many of them children. We know that over 1,000 children in Gaza have now been killed. The value of a Palestinian child's life is equal to that of an Israeli child's life or a British child's life. If you do not believe that, then you do not believe in the sanctity of human life. You only care about human life, innocent human life, if it's not about what the ethnicity 
or religion happens to be. Now, when she says, essentially, that the Israeli state should only care about the lives of an Israeli child, that is not the legal position, let alone the moral position. In the words of the International Committee of the Red Cross, the occupying power has a duty to ensure the protection, security and welfare of the people living under occupation and to guarantee that they can live as normal a life as possible in accordance with their own laws, cultures and traditions. You are morally obliged not to kill children, whether they are Israeli or not. Why am I even having to say this? Let's continue. We have been showing images this morning that uh, illustrate that there is a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. So blame Hamas and ask Hamas why they started those atrocities. Walking so around. you acknowledge that there is a humanitarian crisis? I'm saying there is no. Israel is working. So what do you think is happening? What is happening? There is a war in Gaza, a war that Hamas started by committing a horrible massacre on innocent Israelis. I mean, listen to her, she's all over the place. There is a humanitarian crisis, she first concedes, blame Gaza, blame Hamas for it, she says, but then there is no humanitarian crisis. Again, no one seriously disputes that Hamas committed a horrendous crime. What is false is the idea this all began on the 7th of October 2023. It did not. That was not day one. Palestine has been subjected to the longest occupation of modern times. Their population suffered a mass expulsion in 1948. Israel itself was founded with the use of terrorism. Now, this is going to anger. This, these historical facts are going to anger some people. But they are historical facts. Take the, take the Ergun, a Zionist paramilitary group, which, for example, bombed the King David Hotel in 1946, killing dozens of innocent civilians, which, in 1948, participated in the Deir Yassin massacre in which 107 Palestinian Arab villagers were murdered, including women and children. Manachem Begin was an Ergun member who later became Prime Minister of Israel. The Ergun are celebrated as national heroes in Israel, including the hotel bombers specifically. Israel was in part founded on terrorism, and it glorifies that terrorism. And it, that is relevant to any discussion when we're talking about other struggles for nationhood, not in any way to justify what Hamas did. There is no justification for what Hamas did, but to point out that the killing of innocent civilians is not unique. Now, since then, Israel has systematically stole Palestinian land with Israeli settlements all over the West Bank. In its invasion of Lebanon, mass murder was committed of innocent civilians. In 1982, up to three and a half thousand refugees were slaughtered in the Sabra and Shatia massacre by Israel's Lebanese uh, allies, which an Israeli commission found then Israeli Defense Minister Ariel Sharon responsible for. He later became Prime Minister. Now, this is a, there was a system in place described by Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and the Israeli human rights organization Bethlehem as apartheid. Gaza has been subjected to repeated attacks by Israel, which have call, killed large numbers of Palestinian civilians, as well as the tens of thousands of Palestinian civilians killed since 1948. This year alone, um, 248 Palestinian civilians before the latest atrocity and 40 children were killed. This is the context that the ambassador does not want you to know. The truth is she is an extremist. She opposes the Palestinians very openly having their own state. She openly wants to steal their land. And she is now lying about a humanitarian disaster that Israel is specifically responsible for. We will keep on taking on this propaganda. It is important and it is a matter of life and death. Please do share this video to get the message out about what the actual truth is. Please like and subscribe. Do keep the show on the road on patreon.com forward slash ownjones84. Um, you can listen to us on the podcast as well. I'll see you soon.